Good morning, folks. We had the little CME impact we were expecting. We're going to answer your questions from last night's SpaceX solar storm failure video, and we'll hit some other science as well. Starting with our star at spaceweathernews.com, we find the last 24 hours on the sun were quiet. The active regions aren't flaring. The filaments aren't erupting. Coronal hole faces Earth tonight, and so we are off to the CME impact, which again was quite weak and gave just a faint nudge to Earth's magnetic field. You can see the solar wind signature on the right side of the top panels. BX, BZ, proton density, and speed all change simultaneously, indicating the moment of CME impact, but again, very weak, not even a geomagnetic instability from it thus far. And so we're off to SpaceX. You recall yesterday's video about them losing 40 of 49 Starlink satellites launched a week ago due to solar storm effects. The big questions from you surrounded the focus of the solar storm on just Elon satellites. That was the part where I described their orbit, not as high as other satellites due to validation phase testing at lower altitude, right in the primary danger zone for coupling. Now bigger solar storms could have reached other altitudes at times during this disruption, but often even a big solar storm just takes out one satellite. Remember, it was just Sky Terra in 2012. Nothing else broke. NOAA had a couple satellites break during the 1990s solar storms. Most of the other satellites survived. Sometimes it's wrong altitude at the wrong moment. And that's not weird. It's normal. The weird part here was how weak the solar storm was. Rough moment for Earth's weakening magnetic field is the only explanation. Not going to hide a bias here. I've given presentations on the negative immunological effects of GMOs, especially in how they can falsely trigger immune response and chronic inflammation. Here, they're trying to use climate to justify the more widespread use of GMOs, which might help if we weren't on the verge of an ice age. Speaking of which, for the thousandth time in the last couple years, we get confirmation that Arctic warming creates extreme cold. You can melt that ice from the polar region and expect our planet to stay nice and warm, but the oceans and atmosphere are going to throw you a surprise. Last but not least, another Interplanetary Magnetic Field article describing the coupling of the BX component of the solar wind magnetic field. This not only represents another leap forward in that coupling realm for climate science and its effects on Earth, but every study of the radial interplanetary magnetic field of the Sun tells us about the larger scale version of the galaxy and what it does to stars. We greatly appreciate your support. Folks, no news Sunday morning unless there's major space weather to report. Going to be taking a day off that Sunday, February 13th. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close. Subscribe and we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now at 6 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.